When people think of Vince Vaughn, they usually picture his roles in comedy movies, which the actor has had plenty of throughout his career. But unlike most comics, Vaughn didn't intend to become a funny actor. Oddly enough, his road to comedy began with more serious films. Yet, despite the success of his comedy projects in the mid-2000s, Vaughn rarely makes on-screen appearances, and the roles he takes now are far from comedic. Today's video is about the decline of Vince Vaughn's popularity and other moments from his career. Enjoy! Vincent Anthony Vaughn was born on March 28, 1970 in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Vaughn had always dreamed of becoming an actor, and like any other child, many more occupations. He was particularly interested in sports, but while becoming a professional athlete was a desire that faded over time, Vaughn's dreams of acting only grew stronger. When he turned 18, that dream became a goal. Young Vince decided to move to Los Angeles, where he would begin his acting career. As is often the case with novice actors, he was not offered any major roles at first. The actor's foray into show business began by starring in a Chevrolet commercial, and by the end of the 1980s, he began to receive his first film roles. The young actor appeared in less popular TV shows and was far from being a main character. For several years, these were the kinds of projects that Vaughn's career consisted of, and it wasn't until 1993 that he was finally able to land his first big screen role in Rudy. Despite the fact that the role itself was small, for Vaughn, being in a major movie marked a turning point in his career. Another leading role in Rudy was played by Jon Favreau, with whom Vaughn became friends. By the way, the two were close to being cast in the hit TV series Friends. During the pre-production phase of the series' first season, Vaughn auditioned for the role of Joey, and Favreau tried out for the role of Chandler. But as we all know, these roles eventually went to Matt LeBlanc and Matthew Perry, probably for the better. But Favreau, unlike his friend Vaughn, did end up appearing on Friends as a guest star in the sitcom's third season. By the way, while Vince seemed to have simply lost the role to LeBlanc, Favreau claims that he actually turned down the role of Chandler, as he had become engrossed in a new project and was too busy. Favreau, who even at the time didn't want to limit himself to acting alone, was writing the script for the film Swingers, in which he plays the main role. He also recommended to director Doug Lehman that his friend Vince play the supporting role. After a brief audition, Vaughn was confirmed in the first major role of his career. Swingers was very warmly received by both audiences and critics, who praised the on-screen duo of Vaughn and Favreau, among other things. The prolific Steven Spielberg turned his attention to the aspiring young actor and offered him a role in the sequel to Jurassic Park. After Spielberg's blockbuster was released, the actor saw a sharp increase in offers to participate in new projects. In 1998, three films starring Vaughn were playing in theaters simultaneously. The first was the drama A Cool Dry Place, which wasn't well received commercially or critically. The drama thriller Return to Paradise, which came next, also barely made any money, but received much higher ratings from viewers and critics. The parade of films featuring the actor came to an end with Psycho, a remake of the Hitchcock classic from 1960. This film was considered a total failure on all accounts. Not only did it bring in a meager $30 million against the budget of $60 million, but audiences and critics, to put it mildly, were disappointed with what they saw. As further confirmation of this, the film won two Golden Raspberry Awards. Having closed out the 90s on a low note, the 2000s were actually looking quite promising for the actor after starring alongside Jennifer Lopez in what I think is one of the best thrillers ever made. The Cell, in addition to critical acclaim, this film also did well at the box office, bringing in $104 million on a budget of $57 million. Continuing to work in the dramatic genre, that same year Vaughn also appeared in The Prime Gig, which had no effect on his popularity and went largely unnoticed in theaters. In 2001, Vaughn's longtime friend Jon Favreau offered him another opportunity to work together in the film, Made. This time, Favreau not only wrote the screenplay but also directed the film itself. Despite receiving positive reviews from critics, the film only earned $5 million in the box office revenue. Vaughn's next project, Domestic Disturbance, where he starred alongside John Travolta, performed even worse at the box office earning only $54 million against a budget of $75 million, and receiving mostly negative reviews. 
After experiencing several setbacks in a row, Vaughn realized that he was getting nowhere in dramatic films. Serious roles weren't garnering the attention he wanted, and his projects were often box office flops. So, in 2002, he decided to take a risk and switched over to comedy by starring in Todd Phillips' Old School, alongside Luke Wilson and Will Ferrell. When the film grossed over 80 million and received mostly positive reviews, Vaughn realized that he had been doing it all wrong. He received widespread praise for his seamless transition into the comedy genre, despite having no prior experience. Without hesitation, Vaughn dove headfirst into comedy and joined Owen Wilson and Ben Stiller in the 2000 film Starsky and Hutch. The comedy was well received by audiences, earned decent reviews, and grossed $170 million at the box office. As if to make up for lost time spent doing dramatic roles, Vaughn collaborated with Stiller again that same year, this time in a leading role in Dodgeball, a true underdog story. Once again, the film received positive reviews and earned $170 million at the box office. Having already worked with Doug Lehman in 2005, Vince Vaughn landed a major role in the director's latest film, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Although Vaughn's role was only supporting, it was still humorous in nature, aligning with his new tendency towards comedy. The film about a troubled relationship between Pitt and Jolie's characters performed exceptionally well in terms of reviews and earned $490 million at the box office, becoming Vaughn's highest grossing film. That same year, Vaughn again worked with John Travolta in the comedy Be Cool. However, the film didn't appeal to audiences and was generally panned by critics despite an impressive cast. Many cited the film's mediocre script. Nevertheless, by 2005, Vaughn had become so well established in the comedy genre that people were beginning to forget that he had gotten his start in dramas. Media outlets even referred to him as a member of the Frat Pack, a group of actors who appeared in several successful comedies in the mid-2000s. Besides Vaughn, other members of the Frat Pack included Owen Wilson, his brother Luke, Ben Stiller, Will Ferrell, and Jack Black. Later, other actors like James Franco, Jonah Hill, Paul Rudd, Steve Carell, and Jason Segel replaced the original members, but Vaughn and company were among the founding fathers of this unofficial brotherhood. In 2005, Vaughn solidified his status as a comedy star when he starred with Owen Wilson in the movie Wedding Crashers. This film was a huge success, earning $285 million at the box office, and the Vaughn-Wilson duo won the hearts of millions of viewers worldwide. Critics also praised the film, with some calling it one of the best comedies ever made. In 2006, Vaughn continued his winning streak in comedy, starring alongside Jennifer Aniston in the romantic comedy drama The Breakup. Despite the film's box office success, with $200 million in ticket sales, audiences were somewhat reserved towards Vaughn and Aniston's divorce, while critics leaned more towards the negative. In 2007, Vince Vaughn's status as a comedy star was further solidified by a record-breaking paycheck of $20 million when he starred in the Christmas comedy Fred Claus with Paul Giamatti and Rachel Weisz. However, the film ultimately flopped at the box office, earning just $97 million against a $100 million budget and receiving low ratings from both critics and audiences. The following year, Vaughn tried his luck again in another Christmas comedy with Reese Witherspoon, Four Christmases. This movie had only slightly better reviews and brought in $164 million at the box office. Vaughn's next film, Couples Retreat, received mixed reviews from audiences and was panned by critics. In 2011, Vaughn teamed up with Adam Sandler and Kevin James and Ron Howard's The Dilemma, which didn't resonate with audiences or critics. In 2012, Vaughn reunited with Ben Stiller to protect their neighborhood from an alien invasion in The Watch. But even the Vaughn Stiller on screen duo couldn't save the film from flopping. It received negative reviews from critics and audiences alike and didn't break even at the box office. After a string of unsuccessful movies, Vaughn took his next project seriously and reunited with his best on screen partner, Owen Wilson, to star in The Internship. Although audiences still loved Vaughn and Wilson together, the film had a lukewarm reception domestically, earning just $40 million at the box office and receiving mediocre reviews. That same year, however, Delivery Man was released, featuring a supporting role by Chris Pratt. The film unexpectedly received a warmer reception from audiences. The comedy received praise from critics and moviegoers and was able to make it on the list of the actor's best movies. However, 
Despite the occasional successful collaboration with Will Ferrell, none of Vaughn's more recent projects came close to the popularity that he had achieved in the mid-2000s. In fact, the actor began to notice the same stagnation from working in a single genre that he had experienced early in his career. So in 2015, Vince decided to make another pivot in his trajectory, doing a 180 from comedy back to dramas. Perhaps True Detective, which had once breathed new life into Matthew McConaughey's career, could do something similar for Vince Vaughn. Once it became known that the actor would appear alongside Colin Farrell in the second season of the series, Vaughn's fans got excited, while those who had gotten to know him during his comedic years were quite surprised by the news. Unfortunately, season two of the show was received much less enthusiastically than the first, with many viewers considering it the worst in the series which currently has three seasons. Also in 2015, Vaughn tried his hand once again in comedy, appearing in the film Unfinished Business, but an extremely poor reception from audiences and critics, combined with an embarrassing 14 million in ticket sales, finally convinced the actor that he needed to step away from comedy altogether. But changing genres didn't result in the sharp improvement that Vaughn saw in the mid-2000s. The action movie Term Life, in which he starred alongside Haley Steinfeld, went practically unnoticed by audiences. But unfortunately for the actor, the critics did notice and gave the film the lowest rating in the actor's filmography. But the next year, Vaughn was able to more than make up for his recent failures when one of Hollywood's biggest recluses, Mel Gibson, invited him to play a leading role in his war film Hacksaw Ridge, starring Andrew Garfield. The film was praised by audiences and critics alike, and despite the fact that most critics focused on Garfield's lead performance, Vaughn's work did not go unnoticed and received positive reviews. In addition to Mel Gibson's successful film, Vaughn also appeared in a music video for Maroon 5 that same year. In 2017, audiences saw the actor take on an unusual role as a brutal prisoner in the action film Brawl in Cell Block 99 which was not afraid to show openly violent scenes, among other things. Critics and audiences appreciated this approach and gave the film high ratings, but fell short when it came to ticket sales, resulting in nearly zero box office profit. In 2018, Vaughn continued down the path of brutal action movies, starring with Mel Gibson in Dragged Across Concrete. This time, critics and moviegoers were pleased enough with the actor's performance to add a few hundred thousand dollars to the film's box office earnings. In 2019, Vaughn was content with minor roles, briefly appearing in films like Fighting With My Family and Seaberg. And yes, if you decided to watch the latter because Dwayne Johnson is in it, keep in mind that his screen time amounts only to a few minutes. Don't let the movie posters fool you. In 2020, the actor once again tried to revive his comedy career by starring in the comedy thriller Freaky, where he plays a serial killer who switched bodies with a teenage girl. But it didn't work. The movie was very poorly received by audiences, despite the fact that critics loved it. But as we know, critics don't equal ticket sales, so the film ended up bombing at the box office. That same year, the actor made his debut on the streaming service Hulu, albeit in a minor role for the film The Binge. He also starred with Liam Hemsworth in the thriller Arkansas, but neither of these films were well received by audiences or critics. At the same time, in 2020, Vaughn faced the wrath of Twitter activists after a video surfaced of him greeting Donald Trump at an event and chatting with him for a couple of minutes. Twitter users considered this behavior outrageous and immediately demanded the actor be cancelled. However, at that point, there wasn't much to cancel the actor from, as the number of new projects to feature the actor were already dwindling. In 2021, Vaughn appeared in half of the film Queen Pins. Even though he's featured quite prominently on the poster, he only shows up on screen in the middle of the movie. The film wasn't very successful and is currently the actor's latest project. Despite an early career in dramatic roles, Vince Vaughn only gained the love of audiences through comedies. The way that the genre has changed, or rather ceased to exist, as it would seem in recent times, has had a huge impact on demand for the actor. But as history has shown with Vince Vaughn, he can suddenly come out of nowhere when you least expect it. I hope he'll be able to delight us all again with new roles in the near future. And maybe it won't matter whether they're funny or serious. And on that note, I'll end this video. This has been the story of Vince Vaughn. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. See you soon.